Okay, this is a video of a Royal Navy Merlin HM-1 slash HM-2 anti-submarine warfare helicopter. This helicopter will fly off the Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers. It's already flying off the Type 23 uh, anti-submarine frigates and will fly, fly off the global uh, combat ship when they're ready as well as other flies off the type 45 uh, destroyer as well I consider this uh, helicopter to probably be uh, among the best if not the best anti-submarine helicopters available it's larger than its American uh, uh, counterpart if you will in the Seahawk We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but you can see the four torpedoes that this helicopter carries on the pylons there. Of course, it also carries sonar buoys. It's a big helicopter, and uh, so it outranges the Seahawk and can spend more time prosecuting uh, submarines which is what it is meant to go after. So this is a great helicopter to have. The biggest deficiency that the Royal Navy has is that most of their uh, ships, <clears throat> outside of course of the large amphibious ships or the carriers of course, can only carry one helicopter at a time. So. Uh, they do have four torpedoes, and you would, of course, hope that with the four torpedoes, they could get uh, whatever uh, submarine they were prosecuting. And uh, that is probably likely. Given their size, they have more electronics. The electronics are very good. It's got a large radar. Uh, it can be used to search for periscopes as well as any, of course, submarine that has uh, surfaced. And uh, these are just excellent helicopters. And uh, as I say, I believe probably the best anti-submarine warfare helicopter available to the uh, alliances of the United States and its various allies. Uh, various versions of this are used by other countries like Italy and, and other European nations. Uh, but Europe uh, and the UK in particular uh, use them uh, to great effect. Uh, the English ordered 44 of these and uh, they upgraded 30 of those to the HM2 standard which upgraded the electronics, the radar, and other uh, portions of the helicopter so uh, it's expected that the others may well get upgraded as well and I'm hoping they do this helicopter in the HM2 uh, version uh, can be retrofitted to be the AEW crow's nest helicopter that the uh, English the Royal Navy will use uh, off of their aircraft carrier uh, I hope at some point that uh, other nations like Japan, who are buying the F-35B, which is what the English is, are using on the Queen Elizabeth helicopters, that the Japanese and the South Koreans and, poti and p potentially the Australians are going to use the F-35B on their flat tops. And if a EV-22 based on the Osprey is developed with longer range, higher altitude, and stronger uh, early warning capabilities. I would hope that England would uh, use their HM-2s for anti-submarine warfare exclusively and then buy some of these larger, more effective uh, AEW aircraft in the Osprey. But time will tell on that. In the meantime, let me move this over and show you the difference between it and the U.S. Navy's 
uh, Seahawk helicopter. There's the U.S. Navy Seahawk helicopter. It's a it's a very effective uh, medium-sized helicopter, whereas the Merlin, I believe, verges on large. Uh, the Seahawk does not have the range of the Merlin or the carrying capacity. You can see that on the Seahawk on each side they are capable of carrying a single torpedo so it can carry two torpedoes into battle uh, with its sonar buoys and uh, some very very decent and strong electronics uh, the radar is pretty close if I turn them over you would see that in terms of diameter it's about the same but I believe that the British uh, Royal Navy helicopter is still the more powerful radar. Uh, then we go back to the, the advantages of the Seahawk is that almost every U.S. Uh, surface combatant can carry two of these helicopters. So when they find a uh, submarine, they can prosecute it with one and have the other fueling up and arming up and ready to go to go take the place of the first one and uh, so they don't have to lose contact with the submarine that they're chasing down. You'll notice here that this is uh, a variant that has the magnetic alloy detector on it. That's the little red, in many cases, those are painted yellow. Uh, device there on the carrier towards the aft end of the engine there. And that can be dipped in the water to do metallic alloy detection, which helps find uh, submarines uh, along with the sonar buoys. Nonetheless, the Seahawk is very well known. Uh, the current variety is the MH60R uh, and the MH60S Seahawks. And as I said, for the Aegis destroyers, all the Burke class flight 2A and beyond, for the Ticonderoga cruisers, and for the uh, 10, actually right now 11, uh, aircraft carriers, they, they carry this for anti-submarine warfare protection. I, of course, want to see the SV-22, uh, which is another option for the Osprey to be used uh, in terms of uh, anti-submarine warfare. I believe I have a video of one of those out there. If I don't, I'll put one out. Because it, it would then have even longer range than the Merlin, and be able to potentially carry more weight, which means more electronics, more sonar buoys, and of course, like the helicopter, is capable of uh, hovering over the water and prosecuting uh, potential aggressor submarines that are very dangerous to the surface combatants and particularly to the carriers and amphibious assault ships. But here you have it. Uh, two very strong allies with two very strong uh, helicopter uh, capabilities in terms of anti-submarine warfare. Uh, the Merlin, a larger helicopter, but the Merlin uh, HMS-1 will fit in to the Type 23 hangar and of course the, the newer uh, global combatant that they're going to build. Uh, and of course the uh, Seahawk fits into the U.S. and uh, all of our allies' uh, hangar bays as well. Uh, many of those allies uh, will carry two for the same reason the United States does. So there you have it. Uh, the current main anti-submarine warfare fighting uh, aircraft or variants thereof that are used by the U.S. and its allies uh, to hunt submarines. 
There are variations of these helicopters that are used for search and rescue, that are used for uh, cargo or personnel transport. Uh, the, the Merlin competed with Sikorsky's S-92 and lost, ultimately the Sikorsky won in the VIP, meaning the President of the United States. Uh, the U.S. Marines ultimately selected the S-92. There, so, there were some problems that, that came up with that, but I was still personally kind of hoping that the Merlin would win. I, I think it had some good things going for it. That's not to say that the S-92 Sikorsky that did win is a bad helicopter. It isn't. It's a very good helicopter. It's about the same size as the Merlin. So there you have it. Uh, what started off as and is still principally a Merlin uh, helicopter video uh, has grown here to be a Merlin and Seahawk video and uh, glad I got the opportunity to show them to you uh, they're both very effective and very good uh, aircraft for ourselves in the United States Navy and for our allies in the Royal Navy. I have to say, the Royal Navy is, is squared away. I just wish they had more equipment. Wish they had 12 Type 45. Wish they had four carriers or at least two uh, large cattle bar carriers that use uh, uh, catapults and could use the heavier equipment. But what they do have is very good and they are very squared away and we're grateful to have them as allies. So there you have it. Thanks a lot. This is Jeff Head. Please tune in for my other videos. We've got plenty. By the way, these are both 172nd scale models. Thank you. Please consider signing up for my, uh, my channel and asking friends to do the same. Thanks. Bye-bye.